Welcome to the Let's Talk Smiles podcast, the show dedicated to helping you live your best life with a smile. And now, sharing inside secrets to a Hollywood smile that will take your confidence level from zero to 100 by the end of this podcast. Your host, the queen of smiles and dentist to the stars, Dr. Catrice Austin. Hello, hello, everyone. It's your girl, Dr. Catrice Austin, host of the Let's Talk Smiles podcast. And today, guys, I want to tell you some celebrity smile news. Yes, you know, I love, 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 love bringing all the celebrity smile information to you guys. And today, this is a little impromptu. I am going to have special guest dentist. Yes, I see the love coming in from Smile, Texas. Listen, you talk about celebrity dentists. These are dentists that I first discovered while riding on an airplane. You remember how you used to get on the plane and you pick up the magazine because you have a long flight and you want to kind of go through and see what's popping in the airplane magazine? Well, smile. Texas is a business where I used to see all types of advertisement on their dentistry service. Now, this was pretty... Uh, revolutionary because I didn't see a lot of dentists promoting their dental practices in Airplane Magazine. So let's give a round of applause to Smile Texas Houston. I see they have just joined us and today we are going to share Celebrity Smile News where Smile Texas Houston did a smile makeover on the Real Housewives of New Jersey's Frank Catania. Let's see. Let's bring them in. I want to meet the dentists that are lighting up smiles and doing it big in Texas. So we're going to bring them into this live and let's learn a little bit. Oh my God, there they are. Let's learn a little bit about the smile makeover. Hello, doctors. Now, I cannot hear. Can any, let's see. Let me see. Is that me? Hello? We can. Can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Well, welcome to the Let's Talk Smiles podcast. I was um, scrolling on uh, on the social media platform and learned that you guys did a huge smile makeover on Frank Catania. Tell me about. Well, first of all, let me t- let me learn a little bit more about Smile Houston in Texas. Smile Texas in Houston. <laughs> So Smile Texas has been here, uh, we've been here since 2003-ish. Yeah. Um, and, and from the get-go, it was a, a cosmetic practice only, which wasn't mm-hmm. really something that people really did. Um, so no kids, no filling. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, Just strictly so, veneers. Well. Or, so, or smile makeovers, crowns, yeah. veneers. You do in- dental implants as well? Yes, right. Yeah, so Dr. Klein, he's the does all the implants here, and then Dr. Dooley and I do all of the uh, smile makeovers. Um, and that's how it's been for, gosh, just 20 years now, yeah. just a couple of decades. <laughs> you don't look like you've been in the industry for 20 years. You look darn good over there. Cream? Yeah. <laughs> Moisturizing, yeah. I oh, sure. love it. Love it. So uh, tell me about porcelain veneers and how how did you become the porcelain veneer specialist? Oh, my gosh. You know, it was actually uh, I actually went to dental school wanting to be an orthodontist. And then I realized I no sense at all. I want things done right away. And I didn't think about that. And so I thought, well, what else can I do to give people a smile? Yeah. Right? People that are, um, I'm sure like you, who do smile makeovers, uh, the veneer is kind of the uh, go-to weapon to get people. That's kind of the day. Yeah. Right? 
In today's society, and my story is similar to yours, I wore braces when I was a teenager at the age of 15, wore them for a year, and when my smile was transformed in that year, I was like, gosh, I didn't understand the power of the smile. Well, when veneers started to get really popular, thanks to Dr. Bill Dorfman, our colleague in Los Angeles, California, I said, I want to learn how to do this because it's instant gratification. It's yeah. instant transformation. And I don't know about you guys, that's what I love. And uh, since in the last year, I've gotten my own veneers after doing veneers for people for 20 years. Now I understand exactly yeah. what I do for people. So right. it can be really life ch- changing. And uh, what, what did you do to hone your skills as a veneer specialist? Cause you guys do a lot of them. Tell me about your expertise. Uh, I'll let her go first. Well, my, my story is wildly different than yours. I would yeah. say, because I was fortunate enough to have Dr. Davis and Dr. Klein as mentors, um, I actually joined Smile Texas right out of dental school. What? I started shadowing them when I was you know, halfway through dental school, knew I was a dentist, um, and quickly joined the practice. Um, pretty much like first six months being a residency, mm-hmm. I was chair side with Dr. Davis, you know, all hours of the day, pretty much for the mm-hmm. first six months or so, um, getting my hands in at the right times yeah. and. Um, really getting me up to speed very quickly. So that just repetition and, you know, sheer knowledge being shared from Dr. Davis and other courses that I've taken um, got me up to speed very quickly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was very well, elevated. It was like this, it reminded me of this cute little kid with their lunchbox and their pigtails when she first showed up. And now she's like, yeah, the, the, the porcelain princess. Right? Uh, she, I love that. The porcelain princess. Uh, I'm going to need you to get t-shirts on that. Yes. Funny story, actually. So Dr. Davis has one from, what, Dental School, or when was that? No, was your years, year? years back. I have, a, I have a scrub top that says the near bitch. Right? <laughs> I love it. I have a scrub top made that says porcelain princess on it. <laughs> I have it, and we're going to wear them on the same day at some point. Yeah. I love it. So let's talk about, before we get into Frank's Smile Makeover, let's just talk about what are porcelain veneers. Because a lot of times people ask me, they think in their head about crowns and they think about the amount of shaving that may occur. They see those turkey teeth. They see all the extra drilling. Let's explain to the people out there what are porcelain veneers. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think one of the things that people need to understand is that anything they see on TikTok or on YouTube is going to be the most extreme. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because if you just put like the normal, everyday conservative veneer preparation, it's not graphic enough. It's, it's not. not. It really isn't. It wants to look yeah. at it. It's too boring, right? And so that really is what it is. A veneer is just a really thin piece of porcelain, like a fingernail. Yeah, like a fake. I, I say that it's like the Lee press on nails of dentistry. That's so much better. Nails. Yourself in my age bracket by saying. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I'm. I admit it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they, they are. are. Yeah, it's true. You can get them on them. Yeah. yeah. So, so they go right over the front surface of the teeth. So it's very conservative. Well, sometimes, right? Because sometimes mm-hmm. we'll have a little filling or sometimes their tooth is crooked or broken mm-hmm. or, or something. And so what it's doing is basically you're taking off the enamel that you need to remove to make the tooth straighter or to make it stronger or get rid of the darkness mm-hmm. of it. And then you're putting better enamel back on. Yes. And yeah. then you have straight and attractive and strong and healthy, and there you go. And yeah. you can eat nuts with it. People are typically con- concerned that by getting a small makeover, we're damaging the teeth. Yes, I get that question a lot. They ask, what happens underneath with your real tooth right. if this thing is on the front? And what do you say to that, Doc? Well, I would just tell people the tooth gets what the tooth needs. If it needs a crown, it's going to get a crown. If it needs an onlay, it'll get an onlay. If it, you know, it's not... However healthy your teeth are before this treatment starts is how healthy they're going to be after. So let's just talk about when someone contacts you at Smile Texas, what is the first step? What, what, what is your process if someone is interested in the smile makeover? Like Frank. I would say 
say the the easiest um, way to get in touch is typically through Instagram. So that's normally how the process starts, um, at least for the small makeovers, is we're getting photos DM to us. And then Dr. Davis and I will actually review them, send back our recommendations just virtually through Instagram mm-hmm. to kind of see, you know, do they want more info? If they do, you know, we'll send um, like rough estimates and stuff like that and then start with a FaceTime consultation or an in-person consultation if they're local. Is so, it? That- is that, what, is that exactly what Frank Catania did? So Frank Catania. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like, like she said, you know how the, the wave of social media that's kind of over everything. Yeah. We do still get a lot of people that come off of uh, recommendations from other people yeah. or referrals from other doctors or, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll email us. Mm-hmm. So, by far and away, I think now is social media. Social so, media is huge. It is. It's huge. And so it's, it's worldwide. And because of that, uh, 80% plus of our patients that we treat are not from here. And Frank is one of those. And yeah. so what happened was uh, they were interested in getting smiles, their smiles done. So the photos were sent to us and we reviewed it. And if we give a treatment recommendation, we say that that's a, that's a, that's kind of a guide. Yeah. Right. Always we'll confirm it in person. We yeah. want to do our, make sure the person's getting the right care. Uh, but he came in, um, his, his treatment um, slot was already booked for him mm-hmm. because we knew what we were going to do. And we uh, prepared his teeth, put him in temporaries, and then he went home for a couple of weeks and came back. And we took the temporary stuff, tried to mm-hmm. smile in. And then we always have the patient spend the night when they get their smile put in. I like that. Them the next day to make sure mm-hmm. the bite is comfortable, to mm-hmm. make sure... They're happy and everything feels natural and uh, yeah. everything's buttoned up. So his smile and his um, his girlfriend, Rachel, another New Jersey housewife, um, Rachel. So all three of their smiles were actually done in that manner through starting with Instagram photos and they were all straightforward on makeovers. We can treatment an office on the first visit and then got going on yeah. smiles. Yeah. Like you were saying, you know, that's what's so nice about um, doing veneers is because it's so fast that we were yeah. like, we're talking about, you know, not only do you get attractive white teeth, but it's instant orthodontics. You get nice straight. Yeah. Too. Now, what was it about Frank's smile that he wanted to change? What, what was on his wish list? Mm. Well, he was a little rough and tumble looking and, you know, he's kind of got that aggressive, to his physique and you can kind of just imagine what he's done to his ears with that and so he had an underbite uh, kind of an edge, edge underbite that yeah. was real aggressive and he had worn his teeth down has gaps between his teeth mm-hmm. the overall yellowing and wear mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah a little little more round than he was yeah he needed like a little soft. bit better shape for his mm-hmm. his kind of his stature as a person uh, it's you know, he just had a worn out smile, too. Yeah. Which over over the years, our teeth tend to get worn down. We don't look as you don't have many of those youthful characteristics like the translucency sometimes go away, uh, yeah. depending on your habits. If you drink uh, or you chew on ice, you grind yeah. your teeth, pencils and chew on nuts. These things can start to wear down your smile and make you age a little bit more than you want to in the yeah. in the face. Let's talk about. Who are candidates? Now, you saw Frank's picture. You saw that he was a candidate. This is really important. What? Who are candidates for porcelain veneers and who are not? I'm sure, like me, you get a lot of pictures and you're like, mm-hmm. I hate to break it to them, but they're not candidates. Let's talk about who's a good candidate and who is not. You want to take it or not? You got it. Okay. Um, I'm interested <laughs> to hear what you're going to say. Okay. <laughs> You know, there's really good opinions out there, and there's better ones. <laughs> a lot of times we'll have patients that will say, hey, you know, my dentist said I couldn't get veneers. Or so-and-so said I couldn't get veneers because they wouldn't work on me or they would fall off or they would I would break them. And it's I, I, by far and away, more people are than aren't. Mm-hmm. So let's just put it right there. Mm-hmm. I was saying just because we, we say the word veneer, that doesn't necessarily mean that that tooth's going to get exactly a mm-hmm. veneer. What we call it is really a porcelain restoration. That is good. We are restoring the tooth to its proper health, strength, 
and look. Mm -hmm. And in my own house, I have a hodgepodge variety of crowns and veneers. Me too. Yeah. And because it's all the same material, my mouth looks amazing. You don't know what's what, but it's also very healthy. And so the person that has been told, you know what, I'm not a candidate for that. I would just say, get a second opinion by someone who's black. Because a lot of times people are just unsure of or afraid of what they don't understand. That's usually what happens when they get bad opinions given. To them. I, would, I would say the only, really what we see most at Small Texas, given we typically can say yes to everyone, given that Dr. Klein um, does all on forward treatment here. Mm-hmm. That's if, if you're missing uh, teeth and you want something stable, you do a couple implants and those implants yeah. will be attached to a denture, but not the old right. denture that grandma and grandpa had. These are stable dentures that don't come in and out and you have a beautiful smile. You guys do that. Right. So, right. Yeah. So I guess the only person who's not a candidate <laughs> is a person who has no teeth. And then of course, then we just give them teeth. We, we give them teeth. Them. It's that easy. Is that, is really? that magical? Everybody's a candidate to have a nice yeah. permanent smile. Yeah. I'll say generally, if someone is thinking about a smile makeover with a porcelain restoration, usually the first thing that they're trying to get rid of are the yellow teeth and then mm-hmm. m- mild to moderate uh, rotations or m- malpositions of the teeth. You can easily get straight teeth without braces, without getting uh, a year worth of treatment. You can get this quickly. Now, what if someone, I know a lot of times people are like, I want you to choose my smile. Do you get a lot of people that trust you in the design of the smile makeover or do they come in with a, a celebrity smile crush? Did Frank have a person whose smile he wanted it to look like? Did he say he want to look like The Rock or someone like that? Or did you kind of guide him to the smile that you gave him? That's a great question. Yeah, and we yeah. have different answers on this. Okay. So we're about the same. Yeah, okay. 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 You go, because it's essentially the same. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, when people come in, and they, a, lot of, a lot of times, I would say most people let us just choose, because they yeah. kind of trust the photos that they've seen of our work, and mm-hmm. so they, they figure we know what we're doing. Okay. Because every smile is very bespoke. It's very one-off. No two smiles are going to look exactly so, the same. That is yeah, true. Yeah that fits the person's face and you have to fit the personality and the person's age and you know and all that kind of thing so a smile that looks great on one person may not look good on another so we try to kind of guide and let us take over the smile design what we ultimately let them choose is how bright they right a bold yeah yeah Let's talk about this, uh, doctors, because on Instagram, (laughs) I see some teeth that are toilet bowl white, uh, white out white. Do you have a limit as to if a customer comes in and they say, give me the whitest smile, are you going to give them exactly what they want? Or do you try to, based on the skin tone, the color of the eyes and the entire picture, do you try to guide them into the color that you think would fit their, their, their face? We definitely do some guiding, I yes. would say. We try to keep yeah. them corralled. Yes. We <laughs> talk about decision. Yeah. Um, a lot of times they're pretty on point and like what's going to look good on them. Yeah. But if we, I would say typically we see people, if they're going too bright and we know it's going to throw off their entire look, then we'll definitely, you know, reel them in a little bit. Yeah. Um, Same with they're going too dark. Same, exactly. Yeah. That's true. To, say, you know what? Don't worry about this looking fake. You can be brave and you yeah. can choose the brightest. If you want the brightest, let us be in charge of making sure it looks still good. Yeah. Have, we call it, you know, well, I don't, I don't want to say what we really call it, but you can have the, you know, the cheesy you car salesman white versus the angel white. Yes. Right? You get the angel white and still look very real. I like that angel white. I like yeah. that. And we tell them, you know, you pick the shade, but the shape is more important than the shade. So if we get the design correct and it fits them perfectly then, you know, the shade, as long as they're, you know, we're, we'll help them with that. And as you know, it you depends know. on, even though you have two different types or two colors that are exactly the mm-hmm. same, the type of the color, the tone, so they can both be the brightest. 
one looks real, one looks fake. Yep. You know, and that's the quality of your porcelain. We only use the highest quality. We use very high quality labs. And Let's talk about that, doctors. A lot of times uh, we get a lot we get a lot of the credit when it comes to doing veneers, but we all know that the superstars a lot of time are those technicians that are taking that powder and that liquid and they're hand sculpting the veneers. But the communication from us is what guides them into making the veneers. What are some of the characteristics cuz I've seen your work and I love your work. What are some of the things that you guys do to make your veneers Years look real. Yeah. You want it? You go and then I'll follow up. <laughs> <laughs> I think first, I think first and yeah. foremost is shape by yeah. far. What we call line angles, that's probably not a term that the, you know, your yeah. listener necessarily knows, but it's basically how the, the geometry and the shape of the tooth. So it doesn't just look like a blob or a yeah. chunk. Like it has streamlined, it's flush with the gums, it, all those kinds of things. It's where the porcelain isn't. We call it negative. Um, all kinds of things. Now, as far as like the tone of the porcelain in and of itself, um, we actually don't do a lot of layering. It's in fact, very, very little. Mm-hmm. Those six of little translucent make the tooth alive. Those are built into the porcelain, but it's not by layering because what we want is a monolithic porcelain, meaning that if somebody bites and chips their, or excuse me, hits their tooth on a fork, the porcelain for, that your, your dad got mm-hmm. or your mom got back in the 80s, yeah. you chip, today it won't. It won't chip because the porcelain is so durable. So, so strong. It is. It's so strong. And you can have still very, very, very vital, alive, realistic looking veneers and have them absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I think one of the one of the things that most of our patients find that is unique to us is that they like when they scroll through our pictures and see that they're they still look like the person that we didn't just take someone else's smile. Yeah. Same. You know, it's like, not cookie. Really- it's not cookie cutter. It's, it so shouldn't be. Our lab, you know, we're individually designing each tooth yes. to make, rather than giving them, you know, you know, a whole design of this is what we want. It's individual per tooth, but then it designing the whole smile together. So, for Frank, did you uh, completely take control over the design? The, the, the design? Oh, we do on every case, not yep. just Frank. Every case. Every case. <laughs> so, all the cases we actually will give measurements, and we actually and and. and probably nine out of 10 of the cases that we do, we actually draw. Yeah. We draw what we want the smile to look like. We actually send a sketch along with yeah. it so that the laboratory knows exactly what we want this to look like. And so, you know how this is, this is really one of those things where it's half science, half art. And that's why there's so many differing levels of expertise on it because everybody might come out of dental school with the same degree, but not the same level. Of exactly. And taking those continuing education courses are Key. I get a lot of young dentists that want to be the next celebrity dentist uh, like we are. And I tell them, you know, you have to hone your skills. We still I, I understand that they still don't teach a lot of cosmetic dentistry in dental school. So there's going to be when you're searching for a dentist. You know, their credentials, how much training they've had, uh, how much life training, how much in-office training, uh, uh, doing a certain amount of veneers. It makes a difference. These are qualities. I know a lot of times people are driven by price. They want the cheapest veneers. But you really, when it comes to your mouth, you do not. This is not where you want cheap. This is where you want to actually go all out because the smile is such a vital part of your image and your self-esteem and can really make a good first impression. Whether you're looking for a new job, you're dating, you are doing a presentation, you're in sales, you're an entrepreneur and you just have to go out and network. This smile is so important. So this is not where you really want to skimp on, right? We're seeing a lot of I would say with the veneer kind of craze being I would say trendy. Yeah. Uh, now we are seeing a lot of people coming in for, you know, second opinions, getting, getting small makeovers completely redone, um, which is unfortunate because we're seeing a lot of over prepping just from lack of experience. Also. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too is it's it's kind of like one of those things where you don't pick your hairdresser based on who's got the best deal that week or that month. You better yeah. you better preach, doctor. <laughs> you have a good hairdresser. Yeah, my hairdresser. I... <laughs> Yeah. So, Speaking uh, of um, choosing a dentist, we know that uh, there's a lot of people that, because of the price, will opt to go overseas. What are your your feelings on people who say, "Hey, you guys, you guys charge too much in the United States, so that's why we're going overseas." What do you have to say about that? That's fine. That is and fine. We're not for like, we're not for every you know we're not for everyone you know. And if that's I- right. We don't want to try to win the price war because we're not going to. We can't win the price war uh, because we get it. Though this is not for everybody, and it's mm-hmm. for somebody who really wants this to be a lifetime lasting impression. You don't want to get the veneers that make your friends talk about you behind your back, right? <laughs> yes. Buddy, and these like, gosh, I love your. Are those veneers? Are those veneers? That's what I tell people all the time. A good veneer job is like a good boob job or a good butt job, plastic surgery job. We should not be able to tell. We should wonder. It should look like you just got your teeth whitened and that's pretty much it. Unless you're doing something drastic. So, um, yeah, we, we are okay if you guys, you know, the veneers... It's a process. It takes hours of our chair time. It takes hours for the lab to make them. And so, you know, the cost, you know, it, it's a really costly time wise, material wise procedure. Now, what, a couple more questions for Frank. Um, how did he feel when he got his, when he first, first saw his smile? What was that like? Well, wait, wait. He's so cute. Yeah, yeah. It's just this <laughs> engaging guy anyway so um well i don't know his instagram video was actually (laughs) that was actually his his reveal that we recorded on instagram was actually his live reveal he entire treatment yeah he was asleep we have we have an anesthesiologist so he was asleep so when he woke up yeah he didn't see right away you know, he didn't even approve them. Yeah, to come too. Yeah, I've done a. Uh, I have had a couple celebrity clients that were nervous about the procedure, just wanted to go go to sleep, and that is a little scary because we, <laughs> they don't generally. When we do veneers, guys, we'll hand you the mirror, we'll try them in, we'll hand you a mirror, get your opinion on what you like and don't like, and you actually have the option to have us make changes if we can make changes in the office or send them back. However, right. when the patients go to sleep, it is what it is. You have to be the final decision maker. So he woke yeah. up and he loved them, huh? He was like giddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adorable. Right. I it love a, it. A nice, he was the nicest guy. He yes. loved them. He came back in the next day, you know, and he was completely lucid after having them all day, the day prior, completely in love with it. Um, I think it's exactly yeah. what he wanted. And we kind of know, and I think you would – attest to this as well you kind of get an idea of what really is going to work for a person you know what the yeah. design mm-hmm. you know, yeah you once you've the, been doing them for a while you you know right and yeah. you have the training to so that you know what scientifically will work and artistically the right rules that are going to fit that person yes. you're going in and it was going to look great but ultimately mm-hmm. yeah the patient is yeah. is the boss and so it's kind of scary when they give you full control yeah in his case, was such a, such a good example of full control because full he control. was asleep the whole time. Yeah. So, and yes. is that him. is that extra in your office if someone go, wants to go to sleep? Yeah. Right. We we typically do most of our cell makeovers without any anesthesia, without um, sedation. Yeah. Um, offer oral sedation, but we most of them we don't charge. We don't oral charge sedation. Oral sedation. Mm-hmm. This was a you know, by an anesthesiologist. Yeah. Completely asleep. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you guys that are listening out there, and, and this is a very frequent, frequently asked question. If someone is nervous, they want veneers, they want this smile makeover, but they are scared to death. Let's talk about yeah. the options that they have once again, because we don't want fear to stop them from getting the smile that they deserve. Go ahead. So we always have nitrous oxide if they want just laughing gas, you know, to help out with the process. Typically, 
just getting them numb is the scariest part for them. When they're numb, they're, you know, absolutely chilling. Um, but there are some that we need to do an oral sedative where we're just giving them, you know, like a Xanax or a Razagam or whatever to get, make the, take the edge off a little bit. We you take it like, like an hour before the procedure and then they're kind of high, which is yes. a little high. Cocktails and then you just have to have somebody drive you home. But mm-hmm. And especially helpful for men because they don't like how long it takes. Yeah. They don't want to sit in the chair for five hours. And men, so. the men are the biggest Brady cats. The they biggest- are. They <laughs> are. You guys out yeah. there. Ooh. Come on, guys. Eric's so easy. She will kill it. Yeah. It's, yeah, so. It's, it's the big, strong men are the worst. That is true. But you still have more patients do that? Oral yeah, sedation? Maybe, and then maybe, maybe. like. A couple two percent actually want probably two percent will actually go completely in in New York yeah. City. It's about nine hundred dollars an hour is the going rate for going under sedation. So it it, it is costly, but man, it is nice. Now on the pay, doctor side, it's nice for us to work and we don't have anybody talking back. It's right. really nice. I wish I could do all of my patients that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah per hour we just do a, a just a flat rate yeah, yeah that's it i love it what is it like working with celebrities it's exciting i mean we kind of treat them like anybody else regular people yeah. honestly it's weird because well, you might not know who they are yeah i don't know about us that's why you got to stay on uh, pop culture, so you know when these people call your office, you know who it is. Yeah, yeah. all the girls know, and I'm usually like, "Who's that? Who's that?" Yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Who's that?" Okay, who's that? I'm like, okay and, come on. And honestly, I, I don't care about it, and yeah. and I think it's because after you know twenty years of doing this, mm-hmm. you kind of just realize they're just people. They're just people. And they're just people. Also, most of the time, they're nervous. And most of the time, you know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of a a humbling experience. Yes. Yes. It really is. We get to learn things about our clients that their spouses, their partners don't know. We are in a very intimate space. So I I know you guys treat them uh, accordingly. And, and of course, confidentiality is always a big concern uh, when, when we have celebrities, but we, we try to treat them like family, like, like everyone else. Yeah. 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 Ultimately they want to just feel like they're at home. They want to feel comfortable. Right. And at the end of the day, it's really, it's, it's funny because you know, they're a celebrity uh, in the magazines and on television and everything else. But when they lay back in the chair, it's just another set of teeth. It really is. It really is. And so you just kind of shut it off and go to work. Yeah. You go to work. I love that. That is, that's, that's how you have to do it. You can't be all nervous and your hand shaking because you got, uh, you know, whoever in the chair, Frank in the chair. So uh, I know, I know you guys have to get back to uh, smile makeovers, but I want to know how people can uh, book you if they are interested in learning more about the process. Yeah, I mean, I would say the easiest way is, uh, like I said earlier, just through DMs on Instagram. Uh, we have a little highlight reel that shows a template of some photos that we like to see before we can give our, our thoughts. And then yeah. from there, we have um, a FaceTime consultation for our out-of-town patients or an in-person for um, local Houstonians. And then we just go from there. But yeah, we, we get back to DMs pretty quickly. So within a few days, they'll have a response of, um, if we think it'll be a two or three visits fall makeover and, and a rough estimate that we'll confirm in person. Or you can email or email. Facebook message, you know, phone whatever, calls. whatever media you want to use. You, take it. you can find smile, Texas underscore Houston, correct on yeah. Instagram on what other social media channels for our listeners, where else can they find you? Um, email, phone call, Facebook. Facebook. Okay. TikTok. And your yeah, website t- is? Um, SmileTexas.com. Wonderful. I thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with me in the middle of your busy day. 
Congratulations on uh, this Celebrity Smile Makeover and all that you do, all of the smile makeovers. You are truly changing lives with the work that you do. And I'm happy to be a partner and colleague with you in this business. And uh, I look forward to doing this again. This was fun. Yes, thank thanks so much. so much for having us. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And when I come to uh, Texas and Houston, I'm okay. coming by. Okay. You better come by. I, you know what I need? I need you to take me to some good barbecue. Can you, oh, get, can you okay. get me some good Texas barbecue, please? Oh, yeah. We've got you. We'll show you where they are. We'll All right. Them. All right. You guys have a great day and keep, keep the people smiling. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, thank you for joining. Thanks for listening to the Let's Talk Smiles podcast with Dr. Catrice Austin. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And don't forget to leave an awesome review. This podcast is intended to be informational only. It is not a dental consultation, and this is not personalized dental advice. For medical advice, please consult your dentist.